Good afternoon. So today, I'd like to talk a little bit about a comment that I received on the channel. Uh, it's always nice as I'm reviewing the comments in the videos and understanding what this information means to each of you. And there was a comment today that I thought it would make a lot of sense to, to talk a little bit more about and, and kind of dig into. Um, it's always great to hear the comments. It's always great to understand uh, what's going on with, with you folks. Um, you know, I'm living the dream and I'm just trying to uh, help demystify uh, the, the early retirement picture for those of you that may think, you know, I just, I'm just not able to do it. And so what I'd like to do is read the comment to you and then talk a little bit more about it because I, I think there's a lot more that could be uh, gleaned from, from others, from the rest of you that are there. But before we go down that path, I'd like to you know, ask that you take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. And, you know, one of the other things that I'm really proud about is I started a uh, an Instagram. And so you can follow me on Instagram now. And I put a bunch of my shorts there, a bunch of content. There might be other things that I come across that I'm going to put on, the, on there. But it's, it's got a lot of really good information. It gives you some pictures into my private life. Um, I'm a big gardener. I love gardening. Um, I produce uh, vegetables all year round, uh, from collard greens to pumpkins to uh, lettuce to carrots, onions, um, and, and a host of herbs. So, and, and it goes back a, a couple of years. So, feel free, please follow me on my Instagram channel, and I'll, I'll put that link down below along with a QR code if I can get all that to work. But uh, you know, but on that note, let's get into it. So. One of my recent channels, or I'm sorry, one of my recent videos was about, you know, just living your best life and, and really trying to create balance. And so the, the, the comment was, you know, balance is the key. Uh, I still take trips, eat out with friends and have season tickets to my favorite Major League Baseball and NFL teams. As for careers, uh, they're a way to fund retirement, which I completely agree. You work to live. You should not live to work. Um and then maxing out the 401k and Roth IRA are the key. I agree 100%. Most of the time with your 401k, there's an employer match. And so your employer match, uh, you know, puts a lot of times 4 6% on the dollar for everything you invest in. So it's really free money. Uh, and the Roth IRA helps because it's tax-free. So you your growth, you, you pay with after-tax dollars. But when you withdraw it, you don't pay taxes on that, which down the road helps you. Uh, because you don't pay any additional capital gains tax. Um, and then there's, uh, you know, and he says, I'm thinking of, of funding an additional account as well. And so, you know, one of the additional accounts, and, and I mentioned it in my response to him, are right now in the, in the environment of high interest rates is looking at money market accounts. Uh, money market accounts are, uh, are paying higher interest right now because the interest rates are high. And so one of the upshots of high interest rates are when you look at high yield savings accounts, you look at um, um, market money market accounts. I have a money market account that pays me every month. And it's it's a beautiful thing because my money market account in this environment really becomes an income, income stream. Uh, so it works. But, you know, I, I think there's there's a little bit more to this video that I think is 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 phenomenal. And again, I, I appreciate that comment. I appreciate all the comments and I respond to all of the comments. So keep commenting and, and giving me your thoughts on things. But, you know, one of the things I really want to reiterate is and, and dig down into is really that concept of balance. You know, you have to have balance in your approach. I, I think there's a, there's a movement right now, which is the financial independence retire early movement. And I think it's great to retire early. But I think when people fall into that movement, they do it at a cost. And that cost is you don't enjoy yourself. You have to take your money, put your money away. You live super thin. And so a lot of things that you want to do, you can't do. And and where that hurts, and, and this used to happen to me a lot when I was traveling, is when I was traveling for work, I had other individuals that were traveling with me. And whenever we'd go out, they would just be extra. They would do too much. They spend too much money. They drink too much. They party too hard. And some of these folks were, were 40, 50, some 60 years old. And the impression that I always got was that they didn't enjoy their 20s and 30s when they were supposed to be doing that. 
And so now there are these old ass people out there trying to live their, their, their 20s and 30s all over again, and it just doesn't fit. And so, you know, I think the idea is you have to have a life that you want to live and really have a balanced life. I think the subscriber was right when he, when he said, you know, I want to have, and I know it's a he because I saw the name and the name is a he. So I just want to put that out there. But when I, when I, when I was reading the comment, I saw there were things that, that he likes to do. I like, you know, he likes to go to sports. He likes to do different things. Um, you know, his approach on, on work, I think is spot on because again, you work to live, you don't live to work. Is there some work that you have to do in order to get yourself to the position that you need to be? 100%. And there's always going to be that. But I think that, you know, you have to balance that with just living a, a, a decent life. You want to have fun. You want to have memories. You know, if you ask me what um, what I want, what, what my aspirations are in life, they're real simple. When I'm 90 years old, I want to have a great story to tell. And I want to help a few people along the way, which is the reason I'm doing this, doing this YouTube channel. Um, and so it's, it, but it's hard because we look and see people that are successful. We look and we see people that have made it. We look and we see people that actually get to the places we want to be, but nobody really talks to us about how do I get started with that? How, how do I just get myself to, to even moving in that direction because it seems like there's so many different pieces. And I'll tell you, I'm I'm retired and I look at YouTube videos on retirement and I get overwhelmed. And so if it if I'm getting overwhelmed and I'm already there, then I can imagine what you're feeling. So, you know, one of the and, and it's interesting because I think there's some some very simple things that that aren't even really necessarily financial that you can work on. So, I want to talk a little bit about that. But but I think the first thing we really have to do is people. And I think this helps in our personal relationships, our financial relationships, our work relationships, or any of that. It's really just, you know, seeing things for what they are as opposed to what you want them to be. And so so I'll give you an example. Um, I was in a conversation earlier with a, with a young person and a young person being in their 30s. And we were just talking about life. And, you know, he was mentioning to me that he wants to to kind of step up his his life game. He wants to level up in life and and do some of these things that he sees others doing and 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 move things forward. But it's it's difficult because particularly for for the generations behind us, things are more expensive, things are more difficult, there's a lot more competition. And you know, one of the things that I, I tried to convey to him is you have to have a realistic evaluation of your circumstances, because when you when you look at his life, there's a lot of people that are doing things, some of which he knows, some of which he doesn't know. So, for example, uh, we talked about health care and he's got somebody subsidizing his health care. And so he says, you know, I have this health care and it's great health care. And I don't pay for it. And I said, well, hold on a second. Somebody pays for it because unless you have government health care and even with government health care, there's taxpayers paying for it. But to be insured by a private insurance company, somebody's paying for it. You have to understand where that where that is. You look at the cell phone and you say somebody's paying for your cell phone. And so you might have a couple of dollars in your pocket to do some of the things that you want to do in the moment on a transactional basis. But in the long term, you're really behind the power curve because when you, you know, he's living at his parents' house. So when he's when he says, you know, I want to move out. But when you move out, you're going to have to pay for your health care. You're going to have to pay for your car note. You're going to have to pay for your cell phone bill. You're going to have to pay for your utilities and all those things that you take into that you take for granted. Now, you're not going to be you're not going to get those for free. Somebody's paying for those and you got to be ready for that. And, and it's it's not so much that I have every confidence that he can do it. I think the thing that's going to hurt him is that he thinks he's overestimating his ability to do those things, thinking that, well, if somebody else is doing them, they're not that big of a deal. And so he's not really taking a a, a realistic view of, of all the pieces in. And, and, you know, that's the hardest part, because a lot of times when you look at things for what they are, as opposed to what you want them to be, that's when the difficult stuff comes in. That's when the stuff, that's when you have to kind of face your fears and face the things that aren't right and face those 
uh, those, those deficiencies that maybe you didn't know exist. Oh, I thought everything was great, but this isn't great over here. So I have to fix that. And that might be a hard thing. And, you know, we, we live our lives and, uh, you know, searching for comfort. And so as we search for comfort, we think things a lot of, we focus on those things that make us feel good. And we don't focus on those things that, that don't make us feel good. You know, when was the last time you read a book that you didn't like or watched a movie that you didn't like or played a sport that you didn't like or ate a food that made you sick? You just don't do it. You go, you go for those things that bring you a bit of comfort. And it's, it's no different in life. So when you take that and do that uh, honest evaluation of, of um, you know, your circumstances and, and looking at things for what they are, it's the hardest part, but it's the part that becomes the most critical because now you know what you're working with. And and then you have to start just think of it in terms of baby steps. You know, I don't I don't I can't express to you enough how I'm here at 52, I retired, I retired early, I had a bunch of things happen that were that were fortunate for me in terms of my career, making a decision to, to go to college, uh, finding a uh, making career choices that move me forward. Uh, taking certain jobs that moved me forward, um, you know, eliminating people that were holding me back out of my life. Just there's a whole bunch of things that happen, but it's really about the baby steps. There's, uh, you know, when I was growing up, um, I grew up in a place, I, I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this to you, but, um, you know, I, I have two fears in life. There, there were two fears that I, I grew up with, and I don't know where the first one came from, but I had the fear of getting colon cancer and of being homeless. And those are the two things that I just did not want to do. So everything was around that. Um, and then it's it's funny because with that in my background, I said, okay, now I know where I don't want to be. So everything I'm going to do is going to be based around that. And so even now, as an early retiree, sometimes my wife and I get into this conversation about you know finances because I still get nervous. And I said, you know, I don't want to end up homeless. And... Uh, you know, she's, she tells me all the time, you're not going to be homeless. You know, we, we've saved and we've, we've got mechanisms in place and, and things like that. But it's, it's just interesting. But, you know, when I think about the baby steps, there's things that had happened in my life that were, that were critically important that at the time I didn't know were critically important. So, for example, I, I talk about uh, when I was in my 20s and my, my buddy um, gave me the books. And that was a significant time. But even before that, uh, I remember when I was in high school, there were two types of, there were two options for, three options for people in my high school. Either one, play sports, and I'd hurt my knee, so that wasn't going to happen. Uh, number two, you go and you get a job at um, like UPS or someplace like that, because at that time, UPS drivers were making $18 an hour. I had a neighbor across my street, a guy named Paul. Paul was a UPS driver, so I said, you know what, maybe when I grow up, I'll be a UPS driver, because folks, I hated school. Maybe I'll be a UPS driver. And then Paul hurt his back. And I remember seeing how bad his back was hurting and how difficult of a time he was having with a bad back after, um, you know, while he was after, after, while he was working at UPS. So I said, you know what? That's not going to work for me. So I'm not going to be a UPS driver. And then the, the third thing is going into the army. And I remember vividly. There was a guy named Sergeant Williams. He used to come to my high school. Hey, man, when are you going to join the Army, man? And so I said, you know, I'm going to check it out. Maybe I go to the Army. I do some traveling. I see the world. I meet a whole bunch of people. I have a bunch of fun, so on and so forth. But one day he made his comment. I asked him the question. I said, um, when, you, when you join the Army, um, I heard that you have to get up in the morning and, uh, and, and, and run. And he says, yeah, man, every morning, get up at five in the morning, run five miles in basic training. So I knew that wasn't for me because I, number one, I didn't have the discipline. Number two, I didn't want to do it. And so, you know, so at that point, I just, you know, the, the moral of that story is I just started to cancel things out. You know, those were baby steps. They would have never intimated to me that I was going to be able to retire at 52 years old or 50, yeah, 52 years old, 51 years old. There was a, there was no, there was nothing about that, that that told that to me, but I started to take the steps. So then I, I go to school and I started to think about what can I, what can I do? I'm not an incredibly academic individual. I have friends of mine that were, that were in engineering and they were studying all the time. I knew I didn't want to do that. I knew I didn't want to go to school long enough to be a doctor. My mother told me I should have been an engineer 
or a um, uh, or an attorney because I, I tend to be very logical in, in how I do different things. But I didn't want to go to school and, and have to go to school. So I said, you know, my goal when I went to college was just to graduate and graduate doing something that I think is is interesting because uh, that's the only way I'm going to stay engaged. And so I um, got my I went and got my degree in sociology. And the way I, got, I graduated and got my degree in sociology, interestingly enough, is that whenever I went to class, I'd put together strategy. I say, number one, all the free points, I do all the free points. So I do all the assignments, I do all the reading, because that's usually going to be about 60% of your grade. I try to get at least a B on the quizzes. So that way I would be at at least a C or a B in the class. And then that way I didn't have to spend all my time studying for finals. And the other thing I did, and I know this is going to create some boos and hisses, so I know this ahead of time, but I'd get to know the old people in the class because there were people in the class that were in their thirties <laughs> when I was in college, you know, I'm 17, 18 years old, but they always seem to have the, have the, the, the magic potion for how to, how to get it to, to make their way in these classes. So the next thing you know, I started becoming cool with them. And as I start to become cool with them, they started helping me learn that formula. So I, you know, so then I ended up, I ended up graduating, getting out of school, got my degree in sociology. Then you start to say, well, what is it that you're going to do when you, uh, with, with a degree in sociology? And, and, you know, so again, at each step of the, of the way, the goal was not to, um, try to take it all one fell swoop because number one, it doesn't help. Number two, you're going to get overwhelmed. And number three, going down that path, it's going to burn you out. If you try to be everything you see on Instagram or the gram, as they call it today, um, you know, you're going to end up burning yourself out. And so what I, what I started to do was just take, take little steps, take little steps forward. And, and, and most of those baby steps forward, they're not financial. I mean, yeah, I might've put some money in a 401k, 403b, put money together to try to buy a house so I could sell it and make more money, you know, all these little types of things. But it, but most of the, most of the, of the things of the baby steps are not financial in nature. We think about retiring. We think about getting where we are. We think about, you know, you look at me and you say, oh, this guy must have been a whiz with money. It's just not true. It's it's a lot of the other baby steps that, that I took. And those were, some of it was, you know, trying to set myself up for future job prospects. Uh, when I got out of college, I was a, uh, I worked in education. I was a counselor at, educa- at an elementary school for kids with attention deficit disorder and things like that. So my thing was trying to help these kids mainstream so that way people didn't look at them the way people looked at me when I was a kid. And and it was it was successful, but I knew I wasn't going to make money at it. And I saw a lot of times that the problems with the kids were problems with the parents and the parents weren't willing to change. So it continued down that path. And so then I started thinking, well, you know, the one thing I did learn there is that when I talk, people listen. If I can get if I can get elementary school kids to listen to me, then I could probably get adults to do it. And so then I moved in and went into went into the to the business side of things and got into to recruitment. And, uh, you know, and it's funny because the only thing I really knew is I didn't know the technology. I didn't know all the stuff, but I knew people and my friends would laugh at me when I was a recruiter because I would spend my com- my time having conversations with people about hip hop music and their interests outside of work. And they would laugh at me, but I was making pretty good money, making sure we had the right people. And there was a guy that I used to work with. Uh, his name was Anson Chen. And Anson Chen ran this whole group of engineers. And he said to me, I asked him, I said, why do we, I said, why do you have me in the interview process? I said, I don't know anything about this engineering stuff. And he says, because you know people and these engineers spend uh, days at a time writing code with each other. If they can't get along with each other, then we're not going to be successful and this is all going to fail. And we need somebody that can help identify that. And that, that's what I did. And so, you know, so understanding that. And in and, and taking the right jobs, taking jobs that are going to move me forward, you know, this whole idea of being loyal to a job. I understand why a person is loyal to a job because jobs aren't loyal to you. You know, Ford is loyal to people until they lay off 10,000 people. I mean, it's just it just is what it is. And, and again, I, I think it's great to have friends at work and you like your, your job and all of that. And I think those are all positive things. But at the end of the day, the goal is you got to take care of yourself and your family. Um, you know, you might look at the friends that you have. Sometimes, you know, if you're if you're trying to do some serious stuff or you're trying to move yourself ahead and you got friends that just want to drink and smoke weed every day, then and again, there's nothing wrong with drinking and smoking weed. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is those things can have a a way of distracting you trying to move forward. 
Uh, if you're trying to, you know, you want to, you want to, you have meetings in the morning, you got friends that want to go out and party all night and then get mad at you and give you stress. Well, you know, I get the idea that we should all be strong enough not to, uh, not to fight peer pressure or not to, not to succumb to peer pressure. But the reality is peer pressure is real. And I guarantee you, every single one of you out there is doing something because it looks good to somebody else. It doesn't make you a weak person. It makes you human. So if you put yourself around the right folks, then people give you the right pressure. Like I have friends around me, I have people around me who get mad at me when I'm not doing something to elevate. I got friends around me. I remember one time I had a friend that got mad at me because I bought a car that I couldn't afford and they told me they were going to take it back. And I and my thing was that I was going to be embarrassed because what are the people at work going to think? And that person who's a good friend of mine told me they were incredibly disappointed, not because I almost lost my car, but because they looked up to me because I didn't care. I didn't, I wasn't as focused on what other people thought. So I was, I was an example for them. And so when you have the right types of friends and making sure you have the right types of people, not people just that are going to fill your space, but people that are going to fill your cup. If you get those and you have people around you that, that are, that are exalting in your successes, now you're starting to get that, that Dr. X's magic elixir, as I like to say, the snake oil of life. Um, and then, and then also, you know, another baby step is look at where you waste time. You know, if you think about your life, we get caught up in a lot of bullshit. We get caught up in a lot of things that we shouldn't do. And so the idea is don't do that. Find things, you know, are you wasting your time now? Does it mean you don't have fun? No, have fun. Party like a rock star. I always tell people, if you, if you have the ability, people in their 20s and 30s, I'm like, Go out and party like a rock star. Because when you do it in your my age, now people are looking at you like, man, who's that old dude at the club? And um, But figure out where you're wasting time. Are you staying at a job because other people want you to stay at a job? Are you doing things because other people want you to do them? Um, are you just, do you have aspirations but don't have the confidence? You know, part of my goal with this channel is to help you gain the confidence. Because I'll tell you, I am no better than anybody out there. And the stuff that I've been able to do, if I can do it, anybody can do it. I hate to say it that way because I do know, I do recognize different people have different challenges and things like that. But if I can do it, anybody can do it. And that's what I'm trying to convey to you is that you can do this. I know you can do it. I believe in you. And so my, my point is, but if we, if we allow ourselves to get bogged down in stuff in the BS and the minutia and unnecessary, as I like to call it, unnecessariness, then it's going to slow our progress. It's going to take us away and it's going to have the downstream effect of impacting our confidence. And so figure out, are there areas that I'm wasting my time? Are there areas in my life that don't spark joys? I think it's Marie Kondo, the, the lady that does the, uh, the you know, uh, um, organizing uh, on, 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 on TV. But does it, does it spark joy? If it doesn't spark joy, don't do it. If you're doing something every day that you hate, stop doing it. Because you're a dummy for doing that. Why do stuff that just makes you unhappy? And, and that goes all the way around. So, you know, and then, and then you know, change your focus. Um, you know, start to think about what are those things? Uh, what is it that I want? You know, we, we, you know, there was a guy I used to work with. And every day he would have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's crazy, crazy story. I used to work with this cat. Every day he'd have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And every day... He would complain about the eating these peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And if you know anything about me, I don't have patience for that. So I'm like, yo, man, why don't you, why don't you have your wife make you something different than the peanut butter and jelly sandwich? He was like, I'm not married. I don't have a wife. I make the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches myself. And I'm like, Phew. I said, so you're just comfortable with being unhappy. Don't put yourself in that. If you don't like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, make a ham sandwich. Make learn how to make enchiladas. Do something else. But but the point is, is start to focus on what it is that you want because it's easy. It's easy to uh, to say I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't want this. I don't want that. But that's what ends up manifesting. But if you start to focus on what it is that you want, now all of a sudden you're changing the game. And I challenge you. I challenge you to go to people and see uh, and start to ask them, what is it that you want? Look at people and that have, you know, I, I used to know people that had like, they were, they were seriously, serially in bad relationships. 
And I said, why are you in these bad relationships? Because they would do the same thing. But what happens is all they would talk about is how bad these relationships are. So what do you think the universe brought to them? Another bad relationship. So the universe coalesces around the right idea every time. The right thing's supposed to happen. And a lot of times the things that are supposed to happen are the things we don't want because what we've done is we've created the world around that. It's like Jay-Z said. He said, everybody in the world has a genius level talent. And the key is, is to identify what that genius level talent is and build the world around that. Figure out what you want and where do you go. And then just try to understand what happiness looks like. You know, we're, we're so used to being, as, as people, and again, I try to keep it real on this channel. Um, and and, and, I, and I, I hope that's what, that's what people like about it. But the fact is, is we all know what makes us unhappy. And, but, but most of us don't know what makes us happy. What makes us tick? What makes us go? It's like I told a story in another video about the guy asked, you know, what would you do if you won the lottery? He said, I get another job. I'm like, but you're talking about how stressful work is. So why would you go get another job? Because people don't spend time and really take that inventory. And so maybe part of taking that realistic inventory is saying, you know, these are things that made me unhappy. What makes me happy? And not just don't don't be like the politicians and say, well, the Republicans what do we want to do? We want to hate Democrats. Democrats, what do you want to do? You want to hate Republicans? No, don't do that. You go and you figure out what is it that makes you happy, what makes you tick, what makes you go, uh, what makes the world go round for you. And if you do that and you start building your world around that, then what you start to do is, again, as I say, the universe coalesces around the right idea and you start to build that momentum. And I'm going to tell you, I graduated high school, and I shouldn't tell you this, but the only way I graduated high school was by cheating on an Algebra 2 test on the second to last day of school. Otherwise, I wouldn't have graduated from high school. So I went from being that kid to being a kid that, that goes through his, that graduates from college coming from a high school that had a 55% dropout rate to getting into an occupation, becoming an executive level uh, person in my profession to, to retiring. At, uh, at 51. And so, and, and that's because as I, as, I, as I started to change my mindset, that momentum, the universe coalesced around that and started to move it forward, just like it'll move forward for you. So the last thing I'm going to leave you with is a, is a saying from, um, you know, uh, one of my favorite rappers, a guy named E-40 out of the Bay Area. And he says, you know, you should always jump over pennies for dollars, never jump over dollars for pennies. And so on that note, I'm going to let you go. Have a good rest of your day. Again, if you like this channel, please um, like or subscribe to the channel and uh, come follow me on the Instagram. Then you could send me, you could slide in my DMs and we could, we could chat one-on-one uh, -on, -one, uh, on the Instagram platform. So on that note, have a good rest of your day. Thank you for your time.